Let's talk about your first frontline aircraft, uh, was the Harrier. What were your first thoughts on the jet? Um, honestly, I was so excited when I got posted to the jet. Uh, I then, before you even get to the aeroplane, uh, we did the best flying course I think I've ever done, which was three two-hour trips on the Gazelle helicopter. Oh, wow. Learning how to hover, essentially. And it was the greatest course I've done because you didn't have to learn anything. You just got in this helicopter. The instructor did everything. He turned it all on. And the, you then tried to take it off and then, uh, then go fly around the place. And, and you were getting quite advanced by the end of uh, the sixth hour. Uh, so that was brilliant. But then you turn up and, you know, with the aeroplane behind us, the, the, um, they had just gone. The GR3 had gone. However, they still had the T4, the two-seat version of this. And uh, I was just saying to you before, uh, you know, when we were talking about the cockpit and this one, I remember looking in the cockpit on day one of this two-seat Harrier and thinking, I am never going to be able to do this because it looked like they'd coated the cockpit in glue, thrown a bunch of switches and dials and all sorts of things in. I had no idea what half of it did. Mm -hmm. But they then take you through the ground school, teach you what, uh, uh, how you're going to operate it, and uh, manage to get through that course. And after a, I think it was about 10, or 14, 10 to 14 trips in the two-seat uh, version of these, we went out to America and did the simulator for the GR7 mm -hmm. with the US Marine Corps. Um, oh. So learned how to fly, came back, and then my first flight in a single seat GR7 was the first time I'd ever sat in a GR7. And, really? Uh, yeah, and, oh, wow. uh, and went flying. Easy to take off, and then you think, oh my God, I've got to land it. So that must have been like going from like an old Nokia phone to an iPhone because I heard it had all the digital screens in and everything. Uh, that was the amazing part. Yeah. If, uh, if you point the camera in the GR3 behind us, um, you'll see exactly what I mean about that, the um, cockpit full of switches. But the GR7, um, you know, having come from the GR5, was just an amazing aeroplane yeah. with uh, the full digital displays that had just started coming in. So it was really cutting edge at the time. Yeah. And it was amazing, all menu driven uh, around the cockpit. And the strange thing about it is you still, when you get into it for the first time, don't know what an awful lot of the stuff does. Mm -hmm because they haven't needed to teach you to operate it. You're just right. learning how to fly it. So yep. you know what bits of it do, but then there are other things that you go, I wonder what happens if I press that button. <laughs> Fortunately, we didn't press those buttons until we, were, until we learned how to do it. Awesome. So did you ever fly the Harrier in combat? Uh, I flew the Harrier in the, uh, in the Balkans. When I joined the squadron, they'd already deployed down to Italy and were mm -hmm. actually at that point were bombing over in, uh, in Bosnia. Um, they flew me down there at that point, and my very first trip with the squadron was actually in the full combat waistcoat wow. with weapon, all of that sort of stuff. We didn't actually go and drop anything, but uh, there was me over the top of Croatia, Dubrovnik, you know, looking at... So straight uh, in the deep end. <laughs> straight in at the deep end. You know, I, was, I remember being pretty nervous uh, at the <laughs> time, imagine. you know, in my early 20s, yeah. joining the first squadron and being, and being sent out to do that sort of thing. But it was, yeah. the squadron were brilliant in allowing me to do that. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of turned into the peacekeeping mission, so we did an awful lot of time in the 90s. Mm -hmm carrying bombs, but just you know, ensuring that things were going right mm -hmm. in, in terms of the, uh, the peace process yeah. in that Bosnia area. Mm -hmm. um, so a really, really interesting time. Brilliant. So how many hours did you get on Harrier and did you enjoy your time on the uh, jet? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. The, the thing about the Harrier is that even when you finished your mission, it's still a fun aeroplane to fly. So right. you can come back and you've got to vertically land somewhere or, or you have to um, go and uh, you know, land in a, uh, in a wood if you're doing a, a, um, uh, a field exercise or any mm -hmm. of those sorts of things. Um, it was just great fun to fly. It was mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and so I ended up with about uh, 980 odd hours. It was a shame not to, you know, there's a thing about a thousand hours in the, uh, so in the RAF. Yeah. So, you know, those extra 20 would have been brilliant, but actually I had the world's greatest time. And, and I do realize now that, you know, having those hours just doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, so I had a wonderful time and uh, five years, I was a weapons instructor by the end of it, had gone through the weapons instructor course. Um, so I loved it.